Hi everybody, my name is Michael and welcome to my YouTube channel video on the story of how Bullerslev created Dark. Now, a lot of you don't know like the inside story of this, but there's volatility and that's great, but it's like there's a story about how volatility has evolved and evolved and how why it's so important to measure it and there's different ways to measure volatility. So, I'd really like to get into the um, the story of it and it starts back in the 19 1986 with Bolerslev really learning back at UCSD from Engel. So before we get into it, um, I really want to like come from a place where like if you guys have any questions about business and finance, every week I'm going to have like one or two videos on my YouTube channel and really start to share uh, a little more that's going to help you grow professionally, uh, whether you're in the academic field or the industry field. So let's get started. So what we have to the left side is Robert Engel, and he is a professor at NYU. He is also one of the great directors of VR, VRI, which is the Volatility Research Institute. And he has been a great, outstanding mentor to Bolerslev and has contributed so much to the finance world. Why? Because he created ARCH, A-R-C-H, and ARCH was the first way to measure volatility. Bolerslev was a student a second year PhD student at UCSD in 1986. And back then he was working on a lot and uh, we'll continue the story and show you, but he's, Bolus lives obviously to the right. Okay, next slide. So this is a picture of UCSD. Uh, it's, I think it's close to the economics department, but this is where Bolerslev was first completing an estimation of testing with empirical uh, the empirical portion of Rob's paper with David Lillian and Russ Rubens on the Arch M model. And that was in 1986, which they published a year later in 1987. But what, they had a lot of problems with their model. And one of the problems with their model was like, there was just so much of data input and dealing with the variances and all of it like manually. And so Bullerslev began thinking about improving the model and after having to enter, uh, at, this was because, again, and after entering the conditional variance uh, uh, in the conditional mean equation to discover the best risk-reward trade-off relationship. So what happened was one afternoon, David Hendry walks in to his office and they have a little discussion and David Hendry says, well, you know, I think you should do a different model. I think... Um, I think there, you should be using either the AR or the MA model. I think you should be using the MA model. And then Bolislev goes home and he starts thinking about it. And the next day he comes back and he creates this Garch model. So what's the difference between Arch and Garch? Well, keep going and we'll, we'll talk about it. So here's the Garch formula, 1986. And it's sigma squared sub t plus one equals the weight. And it's like kind of a regression analysis. And What's different about Arch and Garch is that Garch takes mean reversion. So it goes back and then takes out all that backwards data and puts it in. Arch does not do that. So we'll talk further about how Engel was still able to get a Nobel Prize from Arch. And Arch is still really good. Bolislav later uh, publishes a paper uh, con confirming that Arch is still really valid and relevant to the finance world. So let's keep going. So what's Bolislav's journey for getting published? Well, you would think that he would not get published. You would think he would fail a lot of times because first of all, Garch is like a completely unprecedented model. It's, it's, a, it's a model based on complete innovation in the finance world. And it just came kind of came out of nowhere. Um, this was also in the 1980s where like double digit inflation was happening. There were a lot of bad things happening in during this time. And with, with that said, I think I think also Japan had like a recession a few years later. So a lot of things were also bad going to happen. So it was kind of like getting worse, but not like super bad yet. And then so anyway, Bolerslev fortuitously gets published in May 1985. And then he just has to, re he has to resubmit his paper in 1986. So he gets it locked in in 1986 and just like that. And he does admit that a lot of papers do not, it does not happen. Uh, in the world of academia. And for those of you who have tried to like, it's okay to publish a paper anywhere, but if you want to get recognized, it's very hard. And there's a lot of also politics involved in that as well. 
So let's talk about Professor Engel a little bit. Um, he won a Nobel Prize in 1982 based on his ARCH model, which is amazing. Um, his ARCH paper, in his ARCH paper, he did analyze UK quarterly data, which is, um, it's really nice because he, even though he didn't have mean, mean reversion, he knew that. And so he tried to get quarterly data instead of just annual data. And he also pertained to inflation. So he took it, he took account of inflation changes and the shifts of that. Okay, let's move on. Now, of course, you're going to have some challenges based on huge professors like, you know, like Black Scholes model, Black, the professor Black, he challenged Garch. So he says, he quotes, I don't dare write down any sort of formal model in the prices by which volatility has changed. I am not sure I ever will. You know, it's like the green eggs and ham thing. You know, he hasn't even tried it yet, but it's like, no, I don't really want it, you know. <laughs> so um, he, he's already like putting up a huge barrier to Boleslav, but Boleslav's like a really smart guy. So he's just going to be quiet and keep going, right? So he keeps going because you want to see like if it's really real. I mean, if it's not, then uh, truth truth and facts should, should show that. So let's see. So Boleslav keeps going. And sorry about this slide, but Boleslav keeps going. And it just really gets, it, it gets momentum and it's like a worldwide formula that's used in today. Now, does it, is it limited only to finance or does it go out of the scope of finance? It totally goes out, out of the scope of finance, you guys. So what, what else does Garch, is Garch used for? Well, Garch is used to analyze uh, brain waves in science. So it's those little tubes that they put on your brain to analyze some certain patients' heads and scan their brain for brain waves. Garch is used for that because it takes in mean reversion. It takes in the average for that, and it helps scientists and doctors analyze closer uh, to the mean with the patient's brain waves. What else? Heart rate monitors. Wrist heart rate monitors use, some of them at least, use Garch, and it helps create an average or the mean of heart rate wave. What else? Earthquakes. Studying earthquakes is geologists use GARCH, some of them, uh, to analyze earthquakes and maybe predict where earthquakes could be next. What else? Um, what is this? This is this is studying um, again brain waves uh, from the earthquake earth, earthquake standpoint and a little bit of neuroscience. Uh, what else? Supply chain management. Understanding the average of the supply chain, maybe disruptions, finding the average of delays or the average of who gets early. Um, just all those little metrics. Garch could be used as like a level two or a level four kind of thing, right? To be like, okay, let's really find out like how deep this is, how accurate can we be with Garch? What else? MRI scans. Taking an MRI scan because of Bullish Live and Finance, it is expanded to help patients and doctors especially health healthcare in the healthcare sector, utilize GARCH to measure the MRI, MRI scans to detect any inflammations, any problems or challenges that a patient can have. So with that said, with GARCH burgeoning, that has burgeoned all over during the 1980s and in the late 1980s, throughout the 1990s and beyond, there has been a plethora of a lot of copycats. So. We won't get into this, but there's a paper from Ballerslev. I will post it on the link. I will post a, a link below so you guys can just like click that and see like the uh, coterminous amount of uh, of Garch formulas that people have tried to piggyback on Ballerslev. And he's such a classy person because I emailed him one time and he just like you know he's kind of like just he just like disregarded it. So. Um, he's a, an extremely smart, classy person. I recommend that you reach out to him if you have any questions on volatility. I know he's busy, but maybe somehow. But he has had so many copycats that he even wrote a book about this. Um, besides the paper on the glossary of different Garch terms, but I think out of all of them, just the Garch 1.1 model is like the best one. So.